The double bishop mate is exactly what it sounds like. We have two bishops, and the king is stuck in the corner. The two bishops are used to then give the king checkmate. So if you're familiar with how you give checkmate with a lone king and two bishops, this checkmate should be no problem for you. First, the king is already stuck in the corner, and we have two bishops of opposite colors on the board. The key here is to use the fact that the king can't go to one of these squares, for example, uh, in this case, h7. So since the king cannot go here, we can use bishop c3 to give checkmate, since this bishop controls one diagonal, and the other bishop gives check. Now, of course, not all the examples will be as simple as this one. Let's take a look at something a little bit more complex. Let's take a look at this position. In this position, it's white to move, and here it seems like we have a normal middle game position. However, it turns out here that white can win a piece. So if you want to pause your video to think about it, you can do so. Alright, so if you have a little bit of time, hopefully you found the correct answer. The correct answer is queen takes c6. The idea after this move is that if black takes b takes c6, then bishop takes a6, and now we have the double bishop mate. We have one bishop controlling the b8 square, and the other bishop attacking the king. Notice that there must be a rook, knight, and pawn here to prevent the king from escaping to any of those squares. Just as a side note, if black chose to play the move of queen takes a2 after playing queen takes uh, c6 in this position, white can actually simply just remove his queen from the attack, for example with queen c4, and queen a1 doesn't really do anything considering that white can also play knight b1 or king c2. So in this case, white will be up a piece, and he should win the game later on. Now in this position, it's actually black to move, and at first sight, it seems like the position is actually quite equal. Uh, both sides have three pawns and pretty much the same material. However, it seems like white's king is a little bit uh, less safe. He has two bishops in front of his king, of course, but after all, there's only one pawn on g2 defending the king. Black has all three pawns intact, but who knows, maybe later on, white's two pawns in the center, the past pawns, can be very powerful and help him win the game. However, just evaluating the position isn't enough. If we take a look at this position here, it turns out that black is actually winning. So here, black has a tactic, of course. Now, if you want to pause your video, once again, go ahead and do so. But the correct answer here is to play the move queen takes h3. So once again, we had one pawn defending the king against this potential check on b7. By playing queen takes h3, we remove the pawn, and now if he takes our queen, bishop to b3 check, followed by checkmate here, would win black the game. Therefore, after queen takes h3, uh, white couldn't re recapture with his pawn, so after queen takes h3, he would be forced to play something like maybe uh, queen to f3, or some other move protecting the king's side, instead of recapturing the queen, and as a result, he would lose a bishop. So the double bishop mate might not always end up in checkmate, however, if you know the pattern, it can sometimes result in you winning some material and helping that you win the game. So as you can see, the double bishop mate doesn't always result in checkmate, but if you know the pattern, you can a lot of times win material, which will help you win the game.